In this video, I'm going to look at the seasonal patterns which occur every single trading month, at the start of the month and at the end of each month. These two events are the most significant events of every trading month and you can use this analysis to get more and bigger winning trades and avoid losing trades. Stay tuned. Let's look at these two charts. First of all, SPY, S&P 500, ETF, day of the week average gains. And you can see here that Monday is very low. We've got a very small bar here, just 0.01% of all gains over the past two decades occurred on the Monday. Tuesday, completely different story. This is the strongest day. Wednesday, also strong, 0.04%. Thursday, average gains almost exactly the same as Wednesday and Friday has a negative expectation. Despite the fact that the index, that the ETF has increased significantly in value since 2000, Friday still has a negative expectation. Now let's look at one more graph. We've got another seasonal pattern. Here we have trading day of the month. Now we can see here a very pronounced pattern, strong inflows at the start of the month, decent for the first few days but then it gets weaker and then we have another bump up in the middle of the month and then we have another strengthening not quite as pronounced but strengthening towards the end of the month now both of these seasonal patterns are relevant i think both of them are significant both of them explain real factors day of the week explains the weekend fear day traders people wanting to be flat if there's volatility or fear of weekend events day of the month we have inflows we have different factors at work here but how can we consolidate these into one single factor so I've created some more tables here looking at trading day of the month when compared to day of the week so just looking at this this table over here on the left trading day of the month to give you an example, let's look at Friday. When Friday falls on the first trading day of the month, we've had 40 of these. So we've got a pretty decent frequency of these over the past two decades since 2000. Average gain of 0.4%. That's quite high. And Friday is usually a weekday. We've just seen that. We can also see the other first day of first trading day of the month when it falls on a Thursday. We've got an expectation of 0.25% and a Wednesday and a Tuesday. Now let's look at the other end of the table. Scroll down here. We can see lots of Fridays here because it is traditionally a weekday. This is to be expected. An example here, when Friday falls on the second trading day of the month, we've got an expectation of negative 0.3% gains. So we've consolidated the two into a single table. Now I'm not really interested in the stuff in the middle, but the stuff at either end has more significance and you can see here I've plotted it out for this week that we're in at the moment but you can do this for any week of the year so Tuesday November 1st November the first trading day of the month you can see here first trading day of the month falls on a Tuesday we've got an average gain of 0.21 percent when the second trading day of the month falls on a Wednesday which it does this week we have an average gain of 0.31% and so on. Thursday slightly negative, Friday slightly positive. And this is where we're just about to start here today. First trading day of the month on a Tuesday. Now this is where I've done some new analysis. I think that the end of the trading month is best calculated from the end because it's the end date and the start date that are the most significant points the very final day and the very first day so what I've done here is I've done exactly the same analysis but I've counted backwards so one in this table corresponds to the final trading day of the month and two corresponds to the day before that and you can see here this has enabled me to count backwards and if I go back into that chart that I just showed you, you can see here we have got a candle here and a candle here. We've got a bit, it gets a bit messy right towards the end. This messiness is cleared up here. And what we can see when we count backwards is that very clearly the final trading day of the month is in fact a week day. We need to be very careful. By that, I mean it's a week trading day. We're likely to have a negative gain based on the seasonals. 
So we can now count forward and backwards from the most significant event that occurs every single month. The first day of the trading month and the final day of the trading month. And you can see here, this is the pattern for the current week. So October 31st, which was yesterday. See here, we had a negative expectation. But the Friday before that, we had a positive one. And Thursday before that, we had an even greater positive one. So you can see here, now these patterns are never going to be perfect, but there is some significance in there and we can use them to decide which trading strategies to have a manual input. We can even automate it so that we have more than a manual input. We have an automated factor to increase or decrease our position sizes. I hope you found this video useful. I'm fascinated by seasonal patterns. If you want more analysis like this, please click the like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more content like this about analyzing the financial markets, about backtesting your trading strategies, please go to tradeinformed.com.